so based on the rental ordinance that the city is looking to adopt uh, by law, uh, we have to have uh, this uh, hearing um, to answer any questions of uh, landlords or general public. So um, at this time, it is a little after six or so. We don't have anybody at the meeting, so I think what we'll do is we will just uh, kind of turn the meeting over to our police chief. Um, if there's any questions from the council um, on anything that's in the ordinance, any concerns or questions uh, between Eric and I, hopefully we'll be able to uh, get those answered for you. Eric? Really, there is, there is, there's changes, of course, but all we're doing is adding wording to our new policy for the rental ordinances. Um, reference to definitions, our old copy, we only had a total of three different definitions for different violations, different items that can be cleaned up by these rental properties. Eric, it, uh, why don't you uh, grab your chair and come up and kind of sit by the mic, please. So with the new one, it's just we're changing definitions, such as it shows on page one, and then we go into the rental on subdivision 19. All they're doing is describing the rental more in detail, so they're described reference to what we can do as a rental property. Um, substanti substantiated disorderly conduct is, the definition is more vague, which is gonna assist myself with the officers in submitting the right citations if we have to. Under this one, it does not require a state citation like our old ordinance does. In order to enforce the ordinance, there had to be a, a citation issued. On um, this ordinance, it can just be a officer called there because of a loud noise with a verbal warning. It doesn't have to be a, a state citation to set up a precedence of why, why we've been there. Which should we have to do uh, like administrative or th this is, we don't have to do no. any of that? No. As long as like all our, all our complaints are generated through the county, establishing ICR, so we have a date and time, okay. who called it in, all that kind of thing, so we know what's going on. Um, the general rule under 60507 is the same. There's nothing changing there. The information that Carrie and Scott will take reference to the rental ordinance is exactly the same. Um, the, re the rental registration license, that's gonna be a new thing that we're gonna do reference to a fee. And I don't know if we talked about a fee or how we're gonna do that yet, but it's an <coughs> option. It's, it's, not, it's not in stone reference to a fee, but it's something that the council can check out. The background checks are still gonna be allowed if they would come to me and ask for it to deal with it. And then the big one is where it changes is the inspections and the investigations. It's just it's giving the right to the city of peers, myself, the police chief, or anybody that I would ask to, or the city council to go and investigate or inspect the house, to go in and make sure that they're up to snuff, we believe they're healthy, to make sure that the living environment is healthy to the family, to the kids, to the residents of peers. So it's just given us a more detailed look at what, how we can fix some of these problems. One of the things we had, we had talked about was, um, I think we had talked about it at a workshop, one of our previous workshops, is what we would do as far as how the registration would actually go. Um, you know, all rental properties would have to be registered. Um, and what we would do is we were thinking, and, and this was just initially, we were kind of talking about a, a $25 a year registration fee and we would conduct inspections of the rental property once every three years. So let's, that would give Eric three years to finish the, the last of the um, first three years worth of registration fee. So the inspections, unless there was a complaint based, would happen once every three years. The actual fees, uh, registration fees, would be $25 per year. So. That's what we were kind of talking about. Somebody's got some different ideas on that or, or whatever. Um, that's one part of this we don't have set in stone yet. I don't and it's, would you, it, oh, go ahead, so sorry. Would you do inspections then if the rental property, you know, if the renter switched, you know, so a lot of times renters aren't there for three years, so would you inspect it just only every three years or with each new renter in there? No, I think well, unless there be a concern stuff, if you know when somebody switched out, that somebody tell me that their environment was unhealthy, then that sense up where all we gotta do is we have to make a phone call 
they get 24 hours to allow somebody from this council, from the city, into it's been inspected from there. But no, because some of them carry a note best, some of them change hands a little more often than we'd like, but it's something that we'll have to address. Yeah. Reference to the penalty, the penalty is the same. It's a misdemeanor. If there is something, say, there's a house in town that's, that's being used as a rental property, it's not registered with the city, that can constitute a misdemeanor. Um, this one here now, we, we, we have fines, $250,000, $500,000. If it comes to that before, we did have that set up where we could address that, which I think is Aaron, good. You want to take Dennis with you? He's per the, when you go back there, Dennis. Dennis, you can go up here. And then conduct the risk of premises on our last page, 605.10. All that's doing is instead of giving the, the renter three strikes, we give them two strikes if we're there for say two domestics, two um, two fights, whatever it might be, we can start the process of putting our foot down to try and clean up that house or that apartment to keep the rift draft out of town. And to me, when I look this over, there shouldn't be a concern by any of the landlords. I work hand in hand with most of them already, advise them when there's concerns in reference to the rental property. But it's, it's we're gonna, by having this, it's, they have guidelines to meet just like we do, and it's, it's, maybe it's going to help them get rid of some of the rift draft when it comes necessary. Well, it's a, it's definitely a start to an ongoing. It's not maybe not be total here, but it's a start to some of the ongoing problems we've been having with some of the other people. So um, I think that uh, you know there probably going to be some fine tuning of this uh, somewhere down the line. Um, but it, it's, for now, it's like it's a place to start. I think it's a good start. So. And my, and my big one isn't so much, there's a couple that scare me reference inspections that I would like to stick my nose into. They're not apartment complexes, they're, they're singles, where I think they're little to me from the outside right now, they're a little too scary to be even have, you know, with people in them. But the big one for us is that we can just, if we need to get rid of something or cite somebody, we can go after the, the renter, or now we can at least force the landlord to make the decision to keep, to keep it healthy in the neighborhood. Yeah. I did talk with one um, apartment owner who's got a few rental units, and um, um, he's also got some rental units in, in the St. Cloud area. And he said it's uh, he said it's probably long overdue for our community too, and um, you know, we'll give it a whirl and see how it works and what the council decides to do. And, and I've talked to some of the big ones <coughs> here in town, and they're they're on board with the only thing that. The one mention is if that we are called there, that they like a, they'd like us to give them a phone call for every complaint, which I think if we have time, that's great. All, yeah, that's, uh, or a letter can go out or yep. something along that. Yeah. Email even if you just a fast. Yep. Something, yeah, something the landlords. to track it. And I think it's important that the landlords know that we're having problems with one of their tenants. So it um, might be a good way to go about doing it. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, thanks for all the work you put into this, Eric. I know there was a lot. My thing, too, by not having any, you know, nobody really showed up for this meeting tonight. The renters all know about it, or the landlords. That shows that I think that they're in, in force or in tune with it. And, and, you know, I know that one of the first public hearings we had about a year ago on this. Ordinance update. We had one here, and I mean, they applauded pretty much. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to do this. I think it'll be good for the whole it's community. Just copies, copies, right? Okay, I just want to make sure that when you put the final draft <laughs> well, in. Catch it, didn't you? <laughs> no. no, I think it's good that the landlords want to know when they've got issues, you know, because they could just say, oh, that's not my issue. It's good that they, need, that they yeah. want to be told to.